there's more interaction between whites and non-whites now, uh, or what well, shall I say, there's not a, a, a hierarchical interaction as there used to be. So that, you know, I do think that this is forcing people to look at things that otherwise they wouldn't. The Black Lives Matter movement. I am so used to being harassed by the police I'm surprised that I'm not being harassed by the police. They smile at me. You know, I, in the last year I've noticed it because they've been made sensitive to this by the public outcry of police intimidation of black people. Yeah. They say most white people are more intelligent than most black people. You see, so that's a more nuanced and that, that's population thinking. That's right? population thinking. White supremacy is the view that uh, humans are superior to non-humans and that in, among humans that Europeans are superior to Africans, Asians, and Native Americans. And so that uh, was one of the justifications for colonialism and imperialism and slavery. And, but most people ignore the part of European racism. That is, some Europeans were superior to other Europeans. And here you don't have just anti-black racism, you have anti-Semitism, so European Jews were considered unfit. Uh, people from the Mediterranean were considered uh, less fit. People from uh, Eastern Europe were considered unfit. And it wasn't until I think in the 1960s that uh, people from those countries were allowed to immigrate to the United States. So when I see things happening now, you know, I see them often as remnants of what was done maybe 100, 150 years ago you know, which continues to reverberate. Most people in the world still accept white skin as more beautiful than a brown skin. Asia, Africa, Latin America, they have skin whiteners that people continue to use. So I think that uh, uh, these things still derived from the assumptions of white supremacy. I think words delude us into thinking we know more than we do. You know, and it also hides other forms of communication so that verb, if you don't have a word for something, it ceases to exist. If the only kind of interaction you're going to have is a verbal one, you know. And I think that there is much that goes on between people that is not verbalized and that we do interact with one another on those dimensions. But, you know, practice makes perfect. And to the extent that people don't interact in nonverbal ways, or they become less capable of interacting in nonverbal ways. So music has always been my escape from verbosity. <laughs> you know? But I do think that, uh, uh, and it again follows the trajectory of uh, black people in America. Black, one of the greatest contributions, I think, is through music that we have had and one of the most distinct, you know. Uh, throughout the world, people acknowledge the genius of jazz and, and our rhythm and blues and the music that has been produced. So I think that that is an achievement that needs to be explored, that needs to be articulated more within philosophy.